The Ford F-150 actually has three different suspensions on the same platform, and we're gonna talk about all three of them, starting with this vehicle behind me, which is the base. Okay, this is the yep. base truck, right? So we have just a really simple suspension that you'd see in truck, honestly, from the 1930s. For decades. Yeah. For decades, this has been in trucks. This design has been in cars since the beginning of cars. It's called a Hotchkiss design. And what you have here is two leaf springs that run fore aft in the vehicle. It is connected directly to the frame on the front and is connected via a shackle on the rear. Kind of like the shackles we saw on the Model T. Kind of like the shackles on the Model T, but in this case, instead of having one on each end of the spring, there's only one at one end, and it's the rear end of the spring has the shackle. So that spring is held to a, looks like a rigid axle here. It's held to a, to a rigid axle. It's bolted solid with these U-bolts here to this axle tube. So the T had U-bolts as well. T had U-bolts as well. Same concept. Same general idea, except instead of the spring being U-bolted to the frame, here it's U-bolted to the axle. The Model T didn't have shock absorbers, but this vehicle does. All vehicles have shock absorbers now. And here we see a perfect example of staggered shocks. This shock here tips forward on, and is attached to the front of the axle. That one right there is, tip, is, is mounted to the back side of the axle and is tipped backwards. Huh. The reason for that is these springs are fairly flexible. So when you apply torque, and let's say you're accelerating, you want the wheel to spin that way. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is this axle wants to spin in the opposite direction. Yeah, like that, yeah. It's the, it's the, the torque reaction. Mm -hmm. The only thing that stops it from actually spinning is this leaf. Right. The Model T was actually more sophisticated because it actually <laughs> had some links in the right. suspension. This one doesn't. So these leaf springs, they hold the, the axle in the fore aft direction and lateral and, and they act as springs. They do everything. Wow. They, they, they do it all. But because they're springs, they're relatively flexible. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is the axle wants to wind up. This spring, part of the spring bends down and the front of the spring bends up and you get, an, the, the, the spring forms an S shape. Mm -hmm. If at some point you lose traction, like you're on a more slippery surface or you have a lot of power, and you overpower the wheels, you lose traction. Well, suddenly now this axle snaps back. Yep. This spring snaps straight. Then the tire regains traction and the whole process starts over again. Ooh. So you get this oscillation yeah, that can hop. be, that you get, get a hop and that can be really violent uh. at times. Most of these truck, uh, uh, these solid axle uh, people are doing now is they put one shock in the front and one shock in the rear because as the, vehicle, as the axle twists, it forces one of these shocks to move. Okay. And because the shock doesn't want to move, it provides a resistance to that motion. It stops that axle hop. Okay, you're probably wondering, what about the front suspension? Why are we ignoring the front suspension? It's basically the same on all the trucks. Obviously the Raptor is high travel, but the overall design is similar, right? The concept is the same. It's an upper and lower wishbone with a knuckle in between, a coilover shock uh, holding the whole thing up and a rack and pin steering attached to the knuckle. The same for all of them and a fairly standard setup. Yeah, so if you're Ford and you've got this platform, in an ideal world, you offer as many variants of the truck as you can with the exact same parts. That's the dream, right? Now, when you start to change things, especially like architectural things like, fr like a frame, that's when things get expensive. Well, that's exactly what they did here on their three models, right? So the three different suspensions have three very different frame arrangements in the back to support those different suspensions. And let's look at the frame here that holds this Hotchkiss suspension. We'll point out a few of the things that make this one different from the others. In particular, this leaf spring needs a bracket up here to attach mm -hmm. to the frame. Yep. It also needs a bracket in the back to attach this shackle to the frame. The only other thing would be that th these brackets here shock. for the shock are necessary. They're probably gonna be well. different, I would guess, in the they're, Raptor. I'm guessing they're Certainly. going to be different as well, um, but we'll see. So get ready to go from bone simple to more advanced to even more advanced. Exactly. Now we're gonna look at the Raptor. Still a live axle, but a completely different suspension design. Let's get into it. Okay, so if I'm Ford and I've got an F-150 with a frame that's already set up, Ideally, what I would want is to keep the Raptor with exactly the same frame, which is probably what they did in the last generation, maybe. I don't know if they did, but 
Yeah, you, you want to try to keep as much common as possible because that gives you economies of scale. It yeah. makes things cheaper. But there's a limit because a tool that makes something like a frame, mm -hmm. you know, the tools that make the frame can only make so many of them. And they're making lots. They're of making lots of these. Yeah. So as you start to increase the volume of vehicles that you sell, you're going to have to buy new tools mm -hmm. because you can't support all that volume with one tool. So if you're making a vehicle like the Raptor, that is in many ways quite different from the base car, mm -hmm. it starts to make more sense to design a new design, which will give you better performance, mm -hmm. because you're going to be buying a new tool anyway. Yeah, and if you're going to sell enough Raptors, you can justify changing the frame. So let's actually exactly. look at the frame let's, changes here. Let's look at the frame changes. Because in the, in the base car, we saw that there was a bracket up here that held the leaf spring. Well, now we have a bracket that holds these two links, completely different. Two on this side and the similar two on the other side. This is called a four link uh, suspension. Normally four links is all you need for a live axle, but these links are pretty much parallel to each other. So they don't give the axle very much side to side positioning. So there's a fifth link in this design, which is this panhard rod or track rod, which goes from the frame on this side to the axle on the other side, and that controls the side to side motion of the axle. So that, that controls side to side, these control fore and aft. These control fore and aft. And what controls wrap? The wrap is because you have these two links here, so in order for the, for the, the axle to twist like it would on the leaf spring, these two links would have to change length. So you have one so above they, and one below. You have one above, one below, and that gives you the, 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 the resistance to that wrap. Which is why, well, on this one, you see that the shocks are on the same side, the dampers are on the same side. That's right. So then since you have something to control the wrap, you don't need to have the shock, the shock staggered. Mm -hmm. So they went back to having both shocks on the front side of the axle. But also because now you don't have a leaf that is acting as a spring, you need a spring. Yeah. So these designs have coil springs and they have one on each side behind the axle going from a perch uh, welded to the axle tube up to the body. This big bracket here, that's going to be unique for the rafters. Um, the bracket holding the, da the dampers here, that's unique. The bracket, as we pointed out before, holding the links to the frame, that's unique. Mm. So it's, it's a completely different design, completely different layout. Well, what's the advantage? The advantage of this is that you can get a lot more articulation than the leaf spring design. Because leaf springs, when you start to twist them, when you try to twist the axle, the leaves start to bind. Mm -hmm. And these, these uh, multi-link suspensions don't bind. So let's look at the middle of the truck, because in the middle of the truck is where the differences between this truck and the Lightning, which we'll look at next, will really show up. In particular, this drive shaft sits right in the middle, and it needs to be able to move up and down with the suspension. So it needs a pocket right here for it to be able to move up and down through. Fuel tank over here, that's gonna go away with an electric vehicle. Exhaust over here, that's gonna go away with an electric vehicle. But we still need to get power out to the wheels somehow. Yep. And that's the key to understanding why when we look at the Lightning, it will be so different from what we see here and what we saw on the base vehicle. We're about to look at the Ford F-150 Lightning, which is an electric truck. Now, when you electrify a vehicle with a solid axle, it has huge implications on the suspension, which I think to the layperson, how does that make sense? What, what is electric? Why do I have to change the suspension because it's electric? Well, let's have a look. It's pretty right. wild how much Ford changed the frame from the regular F-150 to the Raptor. And then this is on the same right. platform roughly, right? Get ready to have your mind blown because the changes to the frame here are a hundred times more than from the base to the Raptor. In fact, the back third of this frame is completely new, totally different from the base or the Raptor. So remember when we talked about the, the drive shaft in the Raptor, mm -hmm. we saw that the drive shaft sits in the middle of the car and has to be able to move with the suspension. Now, this space is space that we need for a battery because electric vehicle batteries are enormous. If you look at this battery, it spans the width of the frame rails. It runs from here all the way to here. It takes up a lot of space 
that space that you need and that you can't have taken up by a drive shaft moving up and down with the suspension. So imagine if we had taken the Raptor and then we just taken the engine out, thrown it away and put an electric motor in its place. The electric motor would be sitting up front. It would still have to pass its power down this shaft and that shaft would take away basically a slice this big down the middle of the vehicle that you could use for batteries, but you wouldn't be able to because the drive shaft would be there instead. Do you think the layperson on the street realizes that you're talking about suspensions and that you're not proposing to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get back to it. <laughs> That's right, yes. So what that means is instead of having the motor in the front, you put the motor in the back and you put it right here. And that's exactly what Ford has done. This right here behind this shield is the motor. And because the motor is there, you can't have an axle moving in that space either. So now you have to design an independent suspension to connect the wheels to the motor. And that's what Ford has done here. And they've made a very simple design, actually. They've, they've made it as simple as they possibly could. The suspension is effectively one piece. It is a single, enormous it's unbelievable. aluminum cast arm that is attached to the frame at two points here at the front. And that is the only attachment between the suspension and the frame on each side. Now, you need a spring. So here we have a coil and, and um, damper module attached to that same lower control arm at the bottom and attached to a bracket at the top on the frame. This control arm, remember in the Lightning and in the Raptor, all the suspension attached way outboard. But now we've got this attachment over here, way inboard. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there has to be a cross member There's there. There's a new cross member. There's a new cross member there oh, yeah. to be able to bolt this thing to. And it also holds and the And also drive to unit. hold the motor. So there's, there's a, a massive amount of change that was done to the frame in order to accommodate this electric powertrain. The Ford F-150, you might have thought it has one suspension. Turns out it has a bunch of different suspensions. Three different suspensions, completely different from each other, with completely different frames to accommodate them. All on the same platform, it's pretty All wild. on the same platform, all built on the same assembly line. Too. Same body, same bed. Same body, same interiors, same look, but underneath, massive differences between them, just to accommodate the different types of vehicles that they are.